Student doctors, the following 10 slides are incredibly important for laying a foundation for your second year understanding of our pharmacology content. My name is Jeff. Here's my contact information. Get started. So as an example of drug-drug interactions, or herb-drug interactions in this case, about so-called miracle babies, how did I get pregnant while I was on the St. John's wort is an herbal remedy available over-the-counter at GNC in the mall, self-medicating for depression. Its biologically active substituents include two compounds, hyperforin and hyperisin. These compounds are now known to have the effect of inducing the expression and activity of CYP3A4, very important drug metabolizing enzyme. This has the effect in your patients of chewing up their birth control. In other words, this lowers the level of the drug in the serum, thereby decreasing the effectiveness of the medication. This is a canonical example of drug-drug interactions. This is one mechanism, drug-drug, herb-drug, and food-drug interaction. The other primary mechanism of drug interaction, competitive inhibition, whereby one drug inhibits P450 activity so it cannot metabolize the other drug. Cytochromes P450, you'll also see them as SIPs, catalyze numerous types of reactions, but the most common one you'll hear about is hydroxylation of an aliphatic or aromatic carbon, commonly referred to as oxidative metabolism. But these SIPs can do many other reactions shown here. The cytochrome P450 enzyme always occurs as a pair with cytochrome P450 reductase. This reductase takes two electrons from NADPH from the pentose phosphate pathway, moves these electrons through the system, passing them to heme, where they combine with molecular oxygen to produce water and a more polar hydroxylated metabolite. In our example, birth control, in which an OH group gets stuck on the steroid and water is produced, and the overall reaction can be shown here. Any drug combines with oxygen and NADPH to produce a hydroxylated form of the drug and water. Now a 10,000 foot view. The drug goes through phase 1 oxidative metabolism to produce the hydroxylated form of the drug. This hydroxylation is oftentimes a reactive site for glucuronidation. Glucose gets stuck on the drug. Or a sulfonyl group or a glutathione group rendering these drugs as substrates for phase 3 drug transporter proteins. That's how drugs get out of the body via urine, feces, sweat, breath, and saliva is that which is excreted. This is called biotransformation. It converts a fat-soluble compound into a water-soluble compound. Let's talk about SIPs. Click on the link. A very informative review article. It's a pretty good read. Human Cytochromes P450 in Health and Disease. Let's talk about CYP3A4. It's a heme-containing protein enriched in liver and intestine. Ranks first in catalytic versatility. It also ranks first in the number of xenobiotics, drugs, and foreign compounds that it detoxifies or activates. CYP3A4 and carboxylesterase in particular are enzymes that convert prodrugs into drugs. CYP3A4 has numerous substrates and some are listed here. Here are some more. As you can see, it's a very prolific enzyme. It has a broad substrate selectivity. In phase one reaction, there's an introduction of a functional group to include a hydroxyl, amidation, sulfhydryl, carboxylation, produces a small increase in hydrophilicity, whereas phase two reactions produces a rather large increase in hydrophilicity. Phase three reactions comprised of active or facilitated transport by drug transporter proteins cross cellular membranes. That's how much of the pharmacotherapy you prescribe and pharmacists dispense gets across cellular membranes. The following chart summarizes is phase one reactions and phase two reactions that occur in our bodies. We're going to focus on phase one reactions, specifically cytochrome P450 mediated reactions, phase two reactions to include glucuronide conjugation. Let's talk about membrane transporters in drug development. Intestinal epithelia, hepatocytes, kidney proximal tubules, blood-brain barrier. Some of the more important transporters are shown here. They are major determinants of the pharmacokinetic safety and efficacy profile of drugs. Huge implications in drug-drug interactions. They're also a, a significant challenge and therapeutic barrier to the pharmaceutical industry, getting drugs on board. Some of the more important ones we'll talk about today, organic anion transporting proteins, multi-drug resistance associated protein 2, P-glycoprotein encoded for by the MDR1 gene. The expression of these genes is regulated at the level of transcription in response to pharmaceutical compounds, herbal remedies, Numerous xenobiotics can bind to and activate pregnane X receptor in a complex with its heterodimeric partner, retinoid X receptor. 
This header dimer then goes on to regulate phase one, phase two, and phase three drug metabolism pathways in response to the presence of pharmacotherapy. Some of the more important PXR target genes we'll talk about today include CYP3A, UGT1A1, MDR1, MRP2, and OATP2. Student doctors, those previous 10 slides are not covered on this exam, but they should provide you with the foundation to move forward into second year, confident that you can understand pharmacology. This is very important for your future patient's benefit on how drug metabolism pathways work to promote drug-drug interaction, incredibly important. Hello students, this is a gene lecture entitled The Genetics of GI Disorders. My name is Jeff, here's my contact information, let's get started. We're going to compare and contrast the genetic disorders related to heme metabolism, including krigler nayar syndrome and Gilbert's disease, Dubin-Johnson syndrome, Roeder's syndrome. krigler nayar it's a rare autosomal recessive inherited disorder. It affects the metabolism of bilirubin. Non-hemolytic jaundice, higher than normal levels of unconjugated bilirubin and serum. A typical vignette, an infant brought to the pediatrician, noticing yellow color of his skin and behavior changes. His arms are just flopping down by his sides. Parents are known to be first cousins. Your patients will present early in life with hereditary unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Patients will present with absent or very low levels. Intrahepatic conjugated bilirubin. There are two types. Type 1, severe jaundice and kernicterus. Type 2, is less severe, also known as Arius syndrome. Humans have two families of UGT enzymes, UGT1 subfamily and UGT2 subfamily. We are focused on UGT1A. In type 1 krigler nayar the mutation in UGT1A1 renders the enzyme activity totally absent or not expressed at all. In type 2 krigler nayar the mutation in UGT coding region renders the enzyme defective, still active, but less active than normal, is the pathway. Heme is converted to biliverdin by heme oxygenase. Biliverdin reductase reduces biliverdin, bilirubin. UGT1A1 then glucuronidates bilirubin, and that would be excreted. UGT1A1, like most drug metabolizing enzymes, has a variety of substrates, has a broad substrate selection. UGT1A1 metabolizes important anti-cancer drugs in addition, bilirubin. Uronatecan prodrug is converted to SN38, the active form of the drug, by intestinal carboxylesterase enzymes. SN38 then serves as a substrate for hepatic UGT1A1, and a glucose molecule is added to the drug. It's the glucuronide that's excreted in bile and feces. The overall reaction is shown here. The drug becomes glucuronidated through the activity of UGT1A1 converted to the glucuronide and UDP. Thus, the drug is soluble and excreted in this form. Symptoms are shown here. On physical exam, these patients will present as jaundiced oculomotor palsy. Kernicterus is defined as bilirubin deposition in the brain, poor development. In severe forms of the disease, patients die within a few years. Patients can be treated with plasmapheresis, phototherapy, the so-called Billy lights. Moreover, phenobarbital induces expression and activity of UGT1A1. This only works for type 2 in Arius syndrome, results in an increase in UGT transferase messenger RNA and subsequent UGT activity. In serious cases of krigler nayar liver transplant is the last stop. Let's talk about Gilbert syndrome. Patients with Gilbert syndrome present yellowing of the eyes. Here is a typical vignette, third year medical student, so not an infant. Notice that her eyes look a little yellow. Previously experienced a needle stick injury, worried about hepatitis, but also rarely having the time to eat at work. Patients with Gilbert syndrome have a defect in the gene promoter region, so the regulatory region for UGT1A1. These patients exhibit a mild decrease in UGT1A1 activity due to lower expression of the wild type enzyme. These patients also exhibit a mild decrease in bilirubin uptake. It's actually very common in the population. Largely asymptomatic, occasional recurrent mild jaundice associated with fasting. Recall our typical vignette. Ethanol intake can contribute, stress can contribute, medical school, stress, worry of infection with a needle. There are some diagnostic tests available, some genetic tests and other tests, but more importantly, 
Gilbert syndrome presents with unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia without evidence of hepatitis hemolysis. Typically, no treatment is needed. Prognosis is good. Due to the lower presence of UGT1A1, you may want to avoid certain medications that are metabolized by UGT1A1, for example, aronotecan. Remember, mainly metabolized by UGT1A1, and that's how it gets out of our body. So lower UGT1A1 equals increase. Aronotecan. Let's talk about Dubin Johnson and rotor syndrome. A typical vignette. Severe motorcycle accident victim, major head injuries. The eligible kidney donor, but not eligible for liver donation. His liver is black due to mutations in MRP2 in Dubin Johnson syndrome. MRP2, multi drug resistance associated protein number two, bile acid transporter. It moves bile acids from the hepatocyte into the bile. To compare and contrast, Rotor syndrome, mutations in OATP1B1 and OAT, organic anion transporting protein. OATPs are hepatic uptake transporters. MRP2, superfamily of ATP binding cassette ABC transporter proteins, transport various molecules across extra and intracellular membranes. OATPs form a family of influx transporters expressed in various tissue, hepatocytes, blood brain barrier kidney proximal tubules, intestinal epithelia, MRP2, OATPs. OATPs are liver uptake transporters. MRP2 excretes from hepatocytes into bile and also in the intestine moves compounds back into the lumen of the intestine. Histological examination, Dubin Johnson, you can see the black liver, black hepatocyte. The black liver is due to the deposition of a pigmented substance. Dubin Johnson syndrome presents with the grossly black liver. It's due to impaired excretion of epinephrine metabolites, whereas rotor syndrome does not cause black liver. Rotor syndrome is a benign condition with a normal life expectancy. Rotor syndrome is caused by having mutations in both OATP1B1 and 1B3. Jaundice may be an incidental finding. Bilirubinuria is typically present. Oral contraceptives can exacerbate the condition. An increase in total bilirubin in Dubin-Johnson syndrome. Total urine coproporphyrin levels are elevated in rotors. They're normal in Dubin-Johnson. Learning objective two, compare and contrast the genetic disorders related to iron and copper metabolism. Hemochromatosis and Wilson's disease. Our main focus will be Wilson's disease. Other readings. Correlation boxes are shown here. Typical vignette, 33-year-old female referred to a neurologist by her primary care physician for unsteady gait, forgetfulness, and recent episodes of Tourette-like spells. Irises appear multicolored with concentric rings around the periphery. There's free copper accumulation in many tissues, including liver, brain, cornea, joints. It's also known as hepatolenticular degeneration caused by mutation in ATP7B, inadequate copper excretion by liver into bile, Failure of copper to enter into circulation-bound ceruloplasmin. And ceruloplasmin is the transport protein for copper, just like we learned about transferrin as the carrier protein for iron. Copper bound to ceruloplasmin normally represents the largest fraction of copper in the body. Free copper generates free radicals that damage tissues to autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. The role of ATP7B in hepatocellular disposition of copper. Click on the link. A lot of really good information. ATP7B functions in two main places in hepatocytes. When copper levels are low or not in excess in the trans-Golgi network, it's involved in complexing copper with ceruloplasmin to secrete it into the blood. Ceruloplasmin is the major carrier protein for copper. ATP7B's function is to get holoceruloplasmin copper complexes secreted into the blood. Second place, ATP7B functions in hepatocytes. When copper is in excess, the ATP7B protein functions in the excretion of copper into bile. In hepatocytes, this can be either the canalicular membrane, which secretes into bile, the basolateral membrane between the hepatocyte and the blood. Wilson's disease has pleiotropic effects. It manifests very heavily in CNS and liver disorders, some of which we saw in our typical vignette. There are also cardiac, renal dysfunctions, and arthritic manifestations. There's a ring around the periphery, much easier to see in blue eyes.
Wilson's disease, there are Parkinson-like symptoms after copper is deposited in the putamen, hemibilismus, undesired movements of the limbs after copper is deposited in the subthalamic nucleus, dementia after copper is deposited in the cerebral cortex. On physical exam, these patients will have cirrhosis of the liver, corneal deposits, and by the way, these Kaiser Fleischer rings are rarely seen in other conditions. So if you see that, it's fairly indicative of Wilson's disease. In the face of mutant ATP7B, there's a decrease in total serum copper due to decreased celluloplasmin. There's an increase in free copper in the serum, an increase in urine and serum-free copper, and patients will present with hemolytic anemia. A liver biopsy, if you do it, will show increased hepatic copper. Treatment, chelating agents, ammonium tetrathiomolybdate, penicillamine, and trientine. These are all copper chelating agents that promote the excretion. You can administer zinc, which competes with copper for absorption in the gut via the same transporter, or liver transplantation as their clinical condition deteriorates. Prognosis and complications associated with Wilson's. It's a risk factor for several liver diseases, hepatitis, cirrhosis, even hepatocellular carcinoma. These patients are also at risk for Fanconi's disease of the proximal tubules. The sun will shine again.